Tell us about this exciting group that you co-founded and when you did so. I, had, I just had something that I wanted to start writing about. And I had, I was like, you know, actresses, we've been, you know, by, by our age, we've been in so much new play development. We're a big part of it, but we're in it and we know, I just had a sense that, I mean, yes, we all take playwriting classes and that, but I just had a sense that I wanted to, I wanted to write from that experience, like knowing how to put a play together and how to, and what isn't being said. What you know, we grow up with 20 years of experience or whatever, sort of speaking this material and speaking story structure and speaking dialogue and character, and it, so there's like a natural affinity for wanting to do some writing that comes from the performance space. I have started to feel that I want more voice. I want more, I want to take up more space in the room. And writing has given me an opportunity to really expand that piece of my artistic voice. Yeah. What you will find is that putting what you think onto paper, you know, like in, in a character's voice, it's very empowering. And then you're like, why not? Why can't I do this? Mrs. Christie, Agatha picks up the phone and Charlotte goes out to the lock. Dr. Hancock, please. Tell him to come, come at once to Styles. Peter is dead. Hit by a motor vehicle. Well, of course it's an emergency. It's a matter of life and death. Agatha hangs up the phone. A dog enters with Charlotte behind him. Oh, Peter! <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing that the plays seem to have in common is that there is a strong female voice of a certain age that is speaking with um, strength and integrity and experience and is actively searching for some kind of um, personal journey of discovery. That that voice is sort of what's emerging from the diversity of the voices in the group. So, and I think maybe it was Heidi who said, if we form a writing group, she said, I'm in writing groups. She said, what would make it what would not legitimize it, but also make it, it was institutional support. And I said, I think I can find that in Dina Jazz. And I just, I wrote to her, and like Dina is, it was like an email, yes. It wasn't even like I had to explain it or sell it to her, or even, I didn't have to explain any of this to her. She just understood. Interesting to me, it was, it was the, the fact that she comes into her own agency. Yes. yes. And both of them do. Yeah, and that's just so fabulous. I mean, what a, you know, it takes Christie, but it's not just a Christie thing. It's much more than that. Oh yeah, it really is. Oh, it's at every step along the way, we have asked for something, and Dina has said yes. Like, are you interested in the group? Yes. Could we do a retreat up at Dorset, and do you have housing for us? Yes. Can you help with transportation? Yes. Can we get rehearsal space in the city? Yes. Like. Can we expand the group and do a presentation? Yes. We're interested in readings and workshops. Yes. Like, I don't think she has ever, yeah. we have never met any kind of resistance from Dina at all. And that's not nothing, I think, right now. Like, yes, women. Yay, women. But also to find women who are willing to reach in and support a group of women and to help them become something that they weren't before, but still we're in a world where that's pretty special mm -hmm. and unique. Something I feel that's like especially important right now to find a group of people where they're like, you have a voice. Your voice is worthy of being developed. Your voice is worth time and attention and financial resources. And this is a safe and encouraging place that demands kindness and rigor, and we will help you grow your voice. And that feels yeah. really right now, especially. And if anything, if all our group was, was just saying your voice cannot be dismissed, will not be, this is, we're giving it a forum. And I feel like that is why it's gotten so strong. And now it's like, absolutely, and I'm done apologizing.